Dixie Jarko. And I'm Tom Cannon. And Welcome to Author Showcase. And today we're here talking to Mark Engels. Hi, Mark. Good morning, Dixie and Tom. Thank you for having me. No problem. Yeah. Let's start out. Uh, would you tell us a little bit about your book, Always Gray in Winter? Sure. Always Gray in Winter is the paranormal sci-fi thriller featuring the modern-day remnant of an ancient clan of werecats torn apart as militaries on three continents vie to exploit their deadly talents. And it is the first of a werecat family saga series. The second book is currently in edits right now, uh, tentatively titled for While the Tree is Green, and I expect at least one more book in the series and then after that who can say <laughs> my, my 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 muse hasn't uh, told me yet but as you can see with claws and fangs she makes a very convincing argument for writing so so it falls into the fantasy genre is it like a subgenre paranormal fantasy yeah well I, I i bill it as a paranormal sci-fi thriller simply because and i think that especially you and, and and some of the authors who who may be watching this can appreciate that all i knew writing my story was that it was my story and right. it wasn't until after I had finished the draft and had uh, gone through more than one round of edits and wanted to pursue publication and seeking agent representation or submitting to uh, publishers direct the first question that comes out is, well, what genre yeah. is it? And, and then you have to, for, for some people know that going into it, exactly what they're writing. But for me, it was a thing where I had to finish the book and then figure out, well, what do I do with this thing? What, what, what is it so that I can pitch it to the places that would most appreciate it. So it's a paranormal sci-fi thriller. Mm -hmm. I anticipate the rest of the series to be likewise. It's also a family saga because the books are going to feature uh, the character pictured here, uh, Paul E. Kaczynski, a, a werecat and several generations of her family going back to the uh, from the present day going back to the height of the Cold War. That's an interesting point because I know when I published um, I was pretty sure I was pitching a thriller and every agent I talked to was like oh no this is a romance and I was like no no <laughs> and now I'm kind of like okay it's a romance but there's some thrills in there <laughs> so I can see where, where that would be a, a tough thing for a lot of authors to figure out what their genre is. Sure and, and I think that for me it, it I, I set out to write the book that I had in my heart to write and I'm pleased believing that I have done that and the remaining books in the series are, are, are going to be likewise. So I think that if, if my readership is any indication, then there is a place in the market for genre blending. Mm -hmm. There are a few folks in the industry who want nothing to do with that. They, yeah. they, they, they are of the opinion that if you can't fit this book into one of these categories, then you don't understand your story well enough or you mm -hmm. didn't follow enough of the genre accepted conventions to make it appeal to yeah. the people in that particular market segment. If you go to Amazon and take note of the eight million books mm. and counting and tens of thousands seemingly added every week, mm -hmm. then I think that if you limit yourself mm -hmm. to 
to uh, strict genre conventions, th a lot of those books that are out there mm -hmm. would have no reason to exist. And so I'm not terribly concerned mm -hmm. about that, but for you folks who might be interested in completing a book and pitching a book, just understand there are going to be some people out there, agents, editors in the industry, who are going to be of the opinion that if it doesn't fit into this box, then we're not interested. True. Yeah, I think we've heard that from a lot of authors that, uh, you know, do you want to write a book that is marketable, that agents will look for, that they know, know is a proven sales, or do you just write the book that you want to write? Um, and I know, that, so like if you go to Amazon, you, you know, your book, they provide keywords yes. for search terms, you want to look, you know, fantasy and all that yes you know but again your book encompasses more family drama sort of thriller there's some thriller elements right with yes special they're almost yes. like special operatives right? yes yeah. yes so so you can't hardly not and, and, and I I, <laughs> I have a lot of my friends, uh, my, my writer friends and I talk about this, including David Michael Williams, who I know uh, uh -huh. appeared with you, you guys. Yeah, we interviewed and, him. Sure, and, and he and I are both members of Allied Authors of Wisconsin, uh, which whose members previously included a fellow named Gene DeWeese, who wrote The Adventures of a Two-Minute Werewolf, uh -huh. which was one of the books that had inspired me when I was uh, a teenager, part of the reason why I write a book about shapeshifters mm -hmm. now. And and we amongst our group have had several discussions, as you can imagine, about writers and writing. And I have had to tell people in that forum and also some of the uh, other engagements that I've had with book signings and appearances uh, at, at some fandom conventions that I've been to, I may not be, I may not fit the classical definition of a writer because for me it's not about the writing, it's not about making a living from the sale of my books. I, mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't turn down the opportunity, <laughs> but, but, I'm, but I'm not actively seeking that. And Because for people who are desiring that, their, their success is going to be in part measured by writing things that sell. Yep. Mm -hmm. Whether that is what they had in their heart of mm -hmm. hearts to write or not is almost a secondary or tertiary uh, consideration. For me, it was the prime motivation. Mm -hmm. For I, I've, I've, I've gone on record as having said that if I were not writing about the modern day remnant of an ancient clan of werecats, I wouldn't be writing at all because a news flash. I have a family. I have a full time <laughs> career. I, 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 I'm, no. I'm, I'm active in my church. I'm 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 participating in, in, in other oh, things. Yeah. I don't have time for this. Yeah. But I make time for this one because I was on a job site back in twenty thirteen and my muse shows up one night completely unannounced in the back of my subconscious and started shredding around in there and <laughs> saying, right, fool. Yeah. And I said, I don't wanna, I don't <laughs> know how, I don't have time for this. I don't wanna invest the time and energy this necessary time. to learn. And I went, it was a night shift, so I went back and I'm laying in the hotel room tossing and turning on my on my bed for the rest of the day. I, so I go in, to work that night, and I'm not quite, oh, not quite present while I'm there. I go back, and so after this happened three or four nights, mm -hmm. I thought, okay, 
All right, fine. Now just so this leave was me in alone. 2013. This was in 2013. So the next year, I spent uh, coming up with a series outline mm -hmm. for the 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 uh, for Polly and her family and their stories, and I sent that out to a few friends of mine that I had known from when I used to write anime and manga fan fiction. Mm -hmm. Folks that I had met from from those communities and they said, Hey Mark, this 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 concept has legs. We enjoy it. Please don't try to put this all into one book or mm -hmm. it will be the size of War and Peace and yeah. no one will find it useful for anything other than a doorstop. So uh, I had to figure out, okay, where to start, where to end, and then, and then uh, during the following year, I, I, drafted, I drafted this book based on that. I then went through a fairly extensive editing process. Which with involved that. what? To, yeah, with your group, idea. the Allied Writers? Or well, we, we, the, 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 all of the book was workshopped through... Allied Authors of Wisconsin. And so we would meet once a month in one of our homes or, or some of the members actually host a meeting at a library much like this one. Mm -hmm. And we would go through the book chapter by chapter that way. I also had several pre-readers. Mm -hmm. I also found out that not everyone who agrees to be a pre-reader is necessarily a going to be a good fit for sure. you and right. your book. Uh, so, did so, you have it professionally edited at all, or did that ever enter into your it decision did. making? It 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 did, and I had thought about that, and even though I. I'm an electrical engineer. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, 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 I'm a professional in my J job, and I, and I can understand and appreciate the necessity to have a paid professional vet a particular piece of work. I also, through my research, discovered that unlike, say, me being a electrical engineer licensed and registered to practice in 11 states mm -hmm. there's 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 really no there's really no set standards for education or experience or to be or certification yeah. or, or or of 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 these service providers anybody can create a website and mm -hmm. say mm -hmm. I'm an editor and what you really don't have a good sense is number one are they a good editor and number two are they a good editor for your yeah. oh. book because even though they've edited a lot of a particular type of genre are they going to be able to understand and appreciate what you're trying to do because unless and until uh, these people you're getting feedback mm -hmm. from can understand and appreciate what it is you're trying to do, mm -hmm. the feedback you get from them may or may not be helpful. And, and, and that's something that I think every writer, especially those who desire publication, really needs to... Uh, I don't know how they can... I don't know how they can develop that, 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 that sense other than experiencing it themselves. We, we, we hear frequently writers have to develop thick skin, but mm -hmm. I also think writers have to develop discernment because just because someone says, I didn't well, connect with sure. X or yeah. Y, doesn't yeah. necessarily mean you've done that wrong. It's like in our writers group, there's certain people whose opinion I totally value mm -hmm. because they may either read the genre or they mm -hmm. just have a unique perspective. Yeah, there's sure. other people where I'm like, yeah, you didn't like it, but you don't read my type of genre, so you don't get well, sure, what sure. I'm and, doing and, here. So, and, 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 yeah, and, I agree with you in the discernment. And I think even just even uh, putting your book, submitting it to a publisher, uh, they, I mean, they, are, they do know a lot of them do know their business, but also they may be wrong. I mean, there's many, many books 
J.K. Rowling, you submit the book. People have said, nope, oh, this is junk, this is junk. And then you get the right publisher Who's passionate right, about or the it. right agent. And, sure, sure. And uh, they, you know. Sure. Well, I... Stopped clock twice a day. I mean, yeah, right. I mean, we can, we can. I, I think that the that, that they just have their own they, biases. They yeah. well, the, the 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 exception does not prove the rule to be sure, but I do think that what folks like Rowling demonstrated is that just because there's a fair number of people who have said. This is tripe. This is this is the, the, no one's going to enjoy this. Uh, no one's going to pay money for this. No one's going to pub. Well, that's an opinion, and I think that it's incumbent upon the writer to find someone else. Okay, this didn't connect with you. Yep. Maybe this will connect with someone else. How do I? How do I find those people? Where are those people the at? Tribe, How yep. do I approach them? How do I get this under their nose mm -hmm. yeah. so they can, uh, that, that they may not have otherwise heard of it before, so that they can uh, uh, experiencing it and appreciate it? Now, did you go through a traditional publisher or you publish yourself or did you use a bit? How did that work? Tell us about that process because well, our readers well, are always... Again, so your book is always gray in winter. Yes. And it's published through... Published by a small press in Lansing, Michigan called Thurston Howell Publications. Which I thought was hilarious. Yeah. Well, and, 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 and the <laughs> irony is is that the, the fellow who is the principal, his name is actually Jonathan Thurston. Really? And okay. he participates in the furry community as I do and his handle within the furry community because he actually used to work at a wolf sanctuary oh, is wow. Howell. So oh, okay. Thurston Howell is the handle that he has within <laughs> the community. But he's 25 years old. He, 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 <laughs> I, I mean, all, 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 all of us who are, all of us who are <laughs> older than 35. Yeah. No, you know, th 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 immediately here, Thurston Howell, we think of Gilligan's Island. We oh, think it's yeah. hysterical so and nobody, hilarious. Yeah. I, nobody I, I, I remember the first time I had to explain this to them. He, 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 he Oh, what? really? Oh. oh. No. Uh, oh, well, yeah. he, I, I, think, I think it was something oh. that, that he had heard, but I know a bunch of his contemporaries uh, hmm. weren't no. aware of that yeah. either so so mm -hmm. so I get maybe it didn't maybe it didn't uh, occur to him until after I had talked to him. but, but, yeah, but it, it, a lot of folks that I that, that I talked to have, have that those of us over 35 have, have that have that very same yeah. have that very same like, reaction wow, that's cool so 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 yes I, I think it was um, uh, I think it was just by happy accident mm -hmm. <laughs> so how did you find uh, well, what I what I ended up doing is the any of you that are about to uh, submit yourself, subject yourselves to the process of querying, seeking an agent or seeking an editor at a publisher. All I can say is stay the course and be patient because. You're going to get those rejections, and you're going to get a lot of them. You're going to doubt yourself. You're going to Didn't think Stephen you suck. Didn't Stephen King have 600 think... rejections before? Yeah, he put them on a spike, right? Yeah. And, and, and so he figured, he figured, yeah. I just got to go through the numbers, baby. So, yep. so every yep. time he got it, like, there's one, <clears throat> right? Yep. I'm one step closer to yes, and yep. and 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 yep. I think that that that's something that any of us are, are going to have to have. And I was, I maybe didn't have that many. And today all of those are electronic, so mm -hmm. uh, I didn't have a spike that I, I stuck them on every time one came. But what I did have is I had a spreadsheet that right. I would go through and I'd put a line through that row and there's another one and, 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 and I, had, I had rows down to past 100 oh, and I wow. figure you know I'm just going to keep going down through the rows I'm going to give this the old college try and yeah. mm -hmm. and 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 I'm just it, it, it's going to be a numbers game 
And so I was going through the number, and, and what, what I had originally sought is after reading articles in Writer's Digest, after participating in forums like Absolute Right, the water cooler uh, yeah. forum on, mm -hmm. on Absolute Right. That, that's W-R-I-T-E for those of you who might want to go look at it. I strongly recommend the, the Absolute Right water cooler because it helps you find out who some of the unsavory characters oh. and there's lots of them uh, in 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 the business. not everyone who offers to work with you is someone you really yeah, want I mean, to work with absolute so, writer caller or even just google reviews and right to do some editors and predators right and Edit predators and editors is a good one i think they I think someone's picked up the torch because I think the principal behind that yeah. passed away or something. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, so so uh, uh, another one's called Writer Beware, which 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 I know Victoria Strauss does does with the the science fiction writers, science fiction and fantasy writers of, of America. All those are great resources to figure out who's who's worth working with and and, and who isn't. And all of those resources suggest that. Shoot for the moon. Uh, go, yeah. go. If, if yeah. uh, figure if out, you if, in your book. figure yes. out if, 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 if you think that your book is going to appeal to a wide audience, then yes, seek big five publisher mm -hmm. publication involved with that because most of those big five publishers are closed to submissions the, you, you you can't just send your book they call it over the transom where you just yeah. throw your throw your manuscript uh into right. their in basket and Hopefully. some of the some of some of the outfits like a, a tour will still allow contest, you to yeah. will yeah. still allow you mm -hmm. to to do that but but they end up getting piles and piles it, it, they have electronic piles of these things called slush that they have to go then 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 wade through what gets many publishers if you're going to submit to them require the submission come from an agent so an age securing a, a literary agent is almost the first step in many of these applications so fine you go and you look for the agents i participated in several uh, Twitter pitch parties where yep. you have to take okay so you write the book right yeah mm -hmm. you come up with the back cover blurb that yep. was that you, you come up with a synopsis Ugh, right you come up with the back cover blurb Ugh. yeah now you have to distill yeah. that down into 140 characters and exactly. save room for the hashtag mm -hmm. right Wow, um, it's totally I, opposite I, skill from I, you I, 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 I the main of most authors. Yeah. I wrote the book. Now I have to. That's do right. Something. That's that. That's right. Or as I saw in one in, in one case, it, it it there was this meme of this of the, if I if I if I could tell the story in one page, I would not have yeah. bothered with the other <laughs> three hundred. So true. so 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 so, so I, I went through that process and. During that process is when I started researching a lot of agents, started researching a lot of the larger independent presses that you don't need a uh, agent to submit to. And what I saw a lot in this post-Twilight world in which we live was no vampires and no werewolves. So I think Oh, I have werecats. This is easy. No, what 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 that quick what I learned the hard way quickly was that no werewolves means no shifters of any kind. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I had been a member of the anthropomorphic fandom or the furry community mm -hmm. uh, for quite some while, and I thought, well, that there there's there's definitely some uh, cross-genre appeal between my book, which has some characters who are furry part-time and human the rest of the time, and, and the furry community. So I went to the Furry Writers Guild, which is a group of, of writers and publishers within the community, the, the more of a mutual aid society. Mm -hmm. Uh, within mm. within the community that bases its membership requirements may uh, very closely follows the 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 model from uh, SF 
WA, just on mm -hmm. a smaller scale with some of the okay. sales requirements. And uh, they had a page on their website which listed the publishers within the community that were accepting submissions. And at that time, there were only three. But even though, and I suggest to all of you writers too, if you're going to submit, don't think that just because a publisher appears in a list on a third party's page, that they're open for submissions at that moment. Oh, okay. Follow the links, go to their submissions page, see if they're open to submissions, and most importantly, see what they're looking for, because they may be open to submissions, but... And they're pretty specific yeah. when you look. Right, check right. Out, check out their books that, and their right. catalog, make sure it's... Right, legit. right. Yeah. See, see, see if they're, see if this, because see if this publisher is a good fit for your book, because you'll get a very good idea looking at their catalog, looking at their open submission calls, what it is that they're looking for, and you're just going to have to make a decision. Is is, is this a good place? Is is this worth contacting yeah. them about? Because it all takes uh, time. Sure, and it's sure. It's supposed to be personalized and yeah, right. I well, but it, you have to follow. Also follow their guidelines. Submission so, guidelines. Follow them to the letter. If they tell you no, we want one period, one space behind a period, yeah. and not two. Yet they 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 mean that. <laughs> Don't ask me how I know that. I just do. Mm -hmm. so, uh, uh, fortunately, with with the electronic technologies we have today, with Word or the yeah. open document form. They're, they're, they're very easy to do search and replace that. If they want a specific font, give them that specific font. Not everybody wants Courier Time New Roman. Some, some, some want, not everybody wants double spaced either, you know, which blew my mind. No, what do you mean? What do you mean? I don't follow Shun's, uh, Shun's uh, 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 submission format? No, there are some small publishers that deliberately yeah. don't want you to they follow, want to know that you're following Shun. And, and and I suppose maybe sometimes they put that in there just to know, did you bother to read yeah, the submission yeah, requirements exactly. before you submit to us, you know? So, so, so uh, I went ahead and, and I did that. And I did that over and over and over and over and over and over. And frequently, as we're doing that today, there is, there is such a emphasis today that well you have a book in you well mm -hmm. everyone is there's a lot of people that are that are rising to that occasion yeah. and and i think that is good and bad i think it's good because i think there's going to be some fantastic books that that, that yeah. come out of that but i think one of the disadvantages to that is the editors at the publishers and the agents who submit to them are just so inundated with mm -hmm. submissions sure. a whole a whole bunch of them clearly they didn't bother to read the submission guidelines those are yeah. those, those are easy deletes yeah. for, for for them but there are so many there since there's since there's such a large amount of them after they separate the wheat from the chaff they still have so much that now they're going through and they're trying to find what speaks to me? What mm -hmm. sings? And 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 you and and you, dear writer, have no control over that. Sure. It's it's your book, and once you put your baby out into the world, if someone says your kid's not cute, well, it, yeah. it it's it's it hurts. there's really not it, 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 it not only hurts, but there's really nothing you can do with that except to say you didn't think it's cute. Maybe I just need to go find someone else who who will Kindred's go on right. to the next. That's why I had that list because because as I would find out about a venue and I would read it mm -hmm. and I would see are they accepting submissions? Look at their catalog. Do I think that my book would be a good fit for their audience? Because it you don't want it to be the same as everything else in their catalog, but you don't want it to be marginally different because right. it might be outside of their market. Out focus so that's always a real squishy got to be your book that's right it's that's always a very squishy thing but you uh, just you also showed how, how daunting publishing is because you said you know there if you have a werewolf store a story or a, a vampire story they uh -huh. don't even want to see it well there's lots of people that 
love those stories. There's lots of people writing those stories. Yes, yes, and yes. You... Yes. And please don't take this wrong, folks. If you're writing a vampire story, if you're writing a werewolf story, more power write to you. you. Write the story Write the story that's in... Write, write the book that's in your heart to write. It will find its audience one way or another. And, and these trends within publishing... They change every several years. Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, With the next bestseller. Right. And, and, and when Twilight came out, it sold. Everybody said, give me something like that. Yeah. So a lot of the, uh, a lot of the established writing community rose to that occasion, mm -hmm. and they ended up landing four or five, six book deals, mm -hmm. and they get released every year or two. And, well, So now we're, we're kind of on the back end of that. So that, that, that glut is working its way out of the system. Now I'm not going to I'm not going to bet on that horse as to exactly when it's going to cross the finish line and say, you know, okay, think... now 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 everybody can submit. But but just because just because the market has been biased against a particular thing in the past doesn't mean you shouldn't write it, doesn't mean you should not those books seek publication have been popular forever. At some point. Right, I right. Mean, right. Stroker, come on. Right, right. Um, and and uh, and so uh, there, there is an audience out there for that, Definitely. for that book. How I ended up finding the publisher is that after I went through several of those, when I, when I first went to the Free Writers Guild, I thought, well, this is a slam dunk, right? I'll go here, there'll be a publisher, I'll submit, they'll offer. There were three publishers on the list at that time, and I went to all of them to their submission guidelines, mm -hmm. just like we were talking about, and they all said, we're not accepting novel submissions right now, and when we will open for submissions, we don't know, don't ask, <laughs> because, because I imagine yeah, they had probably been buried. inundated with, and, and, and within, within a small market segment like Furry, these, these folks are, are moonlighters. This yeah. is this is this right. is their side hustle in addition to whatever their day job. Some of those folks have families uh, and, and and other and other obligations. So 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 yeah. if they end up getting a whole bunch of people, when you open for some when you open for some oh, I can I can see where they would get irritated with people like that. That's why yeah. I say reading submission guidelines is so. So I thought, okay, well that that door's not open now so then i went looking in the larger markets like i mentioned with mm -hmm. the big five publishers and the agents who submit to them and the larger uh, independent publishers and this was the experience that i had had with them that suggested that the market isn't interested in a book like mine this went on for months and i think the last time i opened that spreadsheet i had 90 some odd Rejections and either they were rejections where you got a form email back. I didn't connect with the work, and mm -hmm. I mean, you could drive yourself mad trying to figure out what that means. So I don't suggest anyone <laughs> try. Or what 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 happens more frequently is you don't hear from them at all. Yep. Right. That you don't hear from them at all, but they usually in those cases say in their submission guidelines, if you haven't heard from us back in. Yeah six weeks or two months or whatever it is that means we, 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 we call it Normans no response means a no yeah. <laughs> so, so, so yeah. there there's there's a lot of folks like that out there and uh, uh, if you end up it, it's also fairly common practice where if someone does come and offer then uh, let everyone else no, because I don't know. It's almost like high school where the girl's not interested in you until <laughs> another girl is, and then, I, don't, I don't. Yeah, I, I haven't quite figured out how that how that dynamic works. Uh, so, so the uh, publishers that were that, that were there, I had I had resp I'd been to these pitch parties. Mm -hmm. There were a few requests. Which was amazing because there's a whole lot of pitches out there that get no requests, and you and you know when you're on a pitch party, you you read their rules for that pitch party, and usually the way it works is you put up a pitch, and now you have 280 characters to work with. with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow, I remember back in the day, you know, uphill in the snow, five miles to school every day, both ways. So, 
So uh, the way those normally work is that you'll put the pitch out there and if an editor or an agent wants you to submit, they will like that yeah. on Twitter and then if you go to their Twitter feed, usually their pinned tweet right at the top says, if I've liked your submission, then please visit our website for our submission guidelines yeah. and make sure you preface your email. The subject line says this, so we'll be able to sort for this so we know that this is a request from this contest. That's what puts you yep. up above the top of the slush pile, above all of the unsolicited submissions. And you have to check your Twitter every right. day. And so, right, and, and, and so I did that a number of times, and there were a few that, there were a whole bunch of those submissions that I then got a form letter for oh. later, or a, mm -hmm. or, or, or heard it's a process, no yeah. response from. Uh, and then, I had also, during this process, I was, I was kind of hanging my head like this because of the experience that I had had with the uh, uh, agents and editors at the big publishers, no vampires, no werewolves, mm -hmm. and I, the, the, oh, no one's ever going to want to read my book. And, and, and just on a whim, I went back to the Furry Writers Guild website, mm -hmm. and in, I don't know, it was probably five or six months in, 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 in between. They had gone from three publishers to nine. Okay. One of them was Thurston Howell Publications. So I submitted. And I submitted, and they liked the, as, as many of you will find out, you sometimes you read on the submission guidelines, they're all different. Some just want a query letter, some want a query letter for the first three chapters, some want the first. 2,000 words, some want the first page. I mean, it, it, it's really all over the map. 300 word synopsis or one page synopsis. Well, right, right, right. And they're all going to be different, so so check them. So so I went, and by this time, I had like a lit pack of 10 or 12 different variations yeah, of those things. Absolutely. So I could just I could just grab a letter and stuff it in, and, and I didn't have to think a whole, think too hard about it doing Doing, doing, doing the 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 queries to get them what it is that the get the publisher what it is they wanted. So I sent that off to Thurston Howell. Didn't expect to hear a whole lot more about it. And then lo and behold, over Labor Day weekend in 2016, I got an offer nice. from a different publisher than. Uh, the, 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 one of the ones that I had submitted to at mm. a uh, Twitter pitch party, who, who frankly I never expected to hear from again. Yeah, you know, three, you three yeah. four, Sunday. five months go by and I'd completely forgotten I'd even submitted to this place and ding, hey, here's an offer. Please review our contract. Oh, oh, Exciting. wow, okay. Uh, so, so then what I ended up doing is, like I mentioned a few minutes ago, I let everyone else know who hadn't told me for sure, no. Oh, really? Yet. Yeah, and, and there was probably... I yeah, it's called six, simultaneous submission. Semi simultaneous yeah. submission. Check your submission guidelines because some markets are okay with that and some are decidedly not. And I, I, I have impressed upon some of the small publishers in my market segment uh, it, within the furry community just... Well, everybody knows that that's wrong. And no, 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 just kind of no. If you come, If you yeah. come from... If you come from the agents and the editors at the big five publishers, they expect you to simultaneously submit because right. they know that their slush piles are, yeah. are, are, you might be waiting up to a year before you hear from well, them. Well, even three or four months is an awful long time right, to be right. waiting. Yeah. Right, right. So, so, so some markets will encourage you to simultaneously submit and some will say, please don't and, mm -hmm. and honor Just their, yeah. so it just so happens that all of the markets that I was submitted to either expected simultaneous submissions or did not specifically state at that time that they didn't want any. Now, some of them recently have gone back and updated their submission guidelines, sure. which is fine. And I mean, that's, change, that's, within, yeah. that's within their... But then again, some of these smaller markets will turn a submission around in two weeks. Yeah. I can wait two weeks. I can, yeah. I can hang out for two weeks while you're looking at this. Eight months? No. I, yeah. I, I, I really don't think that's, that, that's reasonable, and, and, and most people would... Would, would agree with that. So, uh, but when I got the first offer, I did what was suggested, 
And how did I know that? Because I read absolutely mm. right. I, the, the water coolers forum. I had read Writer Beware. I'd, I'd been doing some research and you know I got my Google foo on and tried mm -hmm. to figure out out of the 150 websites that pop up, you know, which ones I should actually uh, implement their 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 suggestions. And, sure. and all of them had suggested that if you get an offer, then let everyone else know who's considering it. And and so I did. They'll also include that on their query page too. You can submit to somebody else, but please let us know. Yes, yes. That And again, that's another so reason to right review the submission guidelines and, and, and at least be thinking about that. Well, one of the ones that responded to that, uh, uh, mo just about all of the ones I, I reached out to at that time responded and decided whether they were going to fish or cut bait. Some just decided to pass, and that was all well and good. At least, at least I knew where I stood with them. Yeah. And mm -hmm. some came back and said, well, okay, I've got the first 50 pages. Can you send me the full manuscript? Well, well, well Thurston Howell was one such, and... Oh, I think it was a week or so, 10 days later, I got an email that said, I, finished, I stayed up all night to finish reading your book, and oh, I'd like wow. to make you an offer. And, and so um, after doing some negotiation back and forth with this first outfit and also with Thurston Howell, I, I, I decided to publish with Thurston Howell, and, and, and here we are. And my experience is not unique. No, was it a one book deal or did he go for the series or No, he, well what what we decided to do is there was nothing in the contract and some of you folks will see this if you do uh, receive an offer of publication and review the sample contract some publishers will desire right of first refusal yep. for mm -hmm. future works in that series uh, Thurston Howell did not and so that's 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 just part of that was not part of their contract. So, uh, but that may be a decision that that may be a factor in in deciding which offer to accept or to pass on. So it was not for a multi-book mm -hmm. deal. Uh, there are some who would uh, desire that. That seems to be fairly common yeah. within yes. the big five publishers. And I think there seems to be almost a, 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 a desire or an inclination within the uh, big five speculative fish, fiction markets, fantasy, mm -hmm. sci-fi, horror, to have a multi-book deal. Sure. Uh, whereas in some of the other markets, it's not as, uh, it's not maybe for romance or maybe for literary, it's not as common to have a multi-book sure. deal. Are, you, are they going to get first crack at the second book in the series? Uh, I need to finish. Uh, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm in my own editing process yeah, right. right now for this. So, so that uh, stay, stay tuned on, on. Because that. There, I mean, there's big presses are great. There's some advantages to the small press, sure. and uh, you know more attention. They can help you out more, uh, but they also have smaller budgets. What are, how are they thank helping you? you? For, thank you for, for, for bringing that up because I, I think that uh, I will make sure that you folks get a link uh, for a gal named Jane Friedman. Oh, yes. Uh, She's who previously great read. Uh, Right. And, and, and she has come up with this very helpful infographic which helps... Uh, look at all of the advantages and disadvantages big five with agent representation larger independents small presses self-publishing and hybrid publishing and there's agent assisted yeah. publishing i mean there's 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 a many different there's yeah. there's she has like six or seven columns in this in this spreadsheet of, of, of ways you can slice this and they have many of those advantages and disadvantages Listed, I, I, because, because, you're, you're quite right that each of those, each of those methods has advantages and disadvantages intrinsic mm -hmm. to 
it. Yeah. And what I had found with self or with small publishing is that yes, the small house, uh, especially Thurston Howell, I've, I've met the principals. I I, I, I like the principals. Uh, I feel very uh, confident that they're. They have in their heart to do right by me, but I also and, and and do right by my book and do right by by my book's audience. But I also know they have limited resources. The principals have day jobs of their own, uh, uh, and in fact, I, Jonathan Thurston, I believe, works as a works as a as a as a as a teacher's assistant teaching classes at Michigan State okay. while he is pursuing his PhD. So oh, wow. I know that he's. He's, He's twirling a lot of plates on sticks himself. So uh, I know that uh, there's limited resources that they have available, which, which, which poses a very interesting quandary. And for those of you who haven't encountered this, you're, you're, you're going to. Uh, one, a, a fellow named John, or, or John A. McDonald, yeah. Is, um, is it James McDonald? James McDonald. James A. McDonald uh, is long been a member of the Science Fiction and Fantasy Writers of America, and he has written extensively in the absolute right forums, trying to impart some of his knowledge of the market and his experiences mm -hmm. uh, to, to to help people coming along behind him. And he came up with this maximum called Yogg's Law. Which goes along the lines of money flows to the writer. At no point should True. the writer be out money for publishing the book, because if you are, that's called vanity publishing, and that ha or subsidy publishing, yeah. which has its own. It's there. That certainly has less of a stigma than maybe it did before, but. Uh, uh, it, it you, you need to understand what that's all about, uh, especially when you're getting some of these contracts to review, because some of them may have, well, the publisher or the, the author needs to buy mm -hmm. X uh, dozen or services. X hundred copies, right? Or and, editing and, and, services. Right. I mean, that, well, what, how about editing services? I mean, the in hybrid publishing and the several authors that we've spoken to yeah. have gone through, they're happy with their books, and I don't think they had to pay for the books themselves. But they paid for editing services. Right. And, well, and book cover. And book cover. Uh, well, and, Things and, they couldn't and, do themselves. And, and the, the, the way McDonald, the way Yad slices this, because this, this has, this has, at one time vanity and pu subsidy publishing was, was considered you know something for those people you know and 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 it was looked upon with a high degree of disdain by people who wrote books and published books for a living okay. uh, what has changed in the oh i don't know 20 or so 20 or so years since since yogg's law first became widely recognized was that self-publishing became a thing and uh, hybrid publishing became a thing and you know as people like Hugh Howey it's become a fairly successful thing yeah. and, 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 and the way people have started to look at this is that if you're self-publisher or you're a hybrid publisher you wear more than one hat you wear a writer hat. Money flows to the writer. But you also wear a publisher hat. And, 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 and maybe my friend David Michael Williams was able to talk about this yes. with, with his implementation mm -hmm. of Absolutely. One Million Words LLC, the, 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 the imprint. He became that, an that, imprint. Right, yeah. right. And, 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 and he and I have had numerous discussions about this, that there's times where you wear the writer hat, money flows to the writer, but there's times where you wear the publisher hat, which the publisher pays for stuff because yeah. the publisher's mm -hmm. running a business to get the book published. And that it just includes how you want to that includes the editing. That includes the book cover. That includes uh, just even the uh, setup. Getting setup listed in the Ingram catalog or the Baker yeah. and Taylor catalog. That includes paying whatever fee NetGalley might 
have to yep. put your book out there so that it can it, it can get that 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 includes that includes that includes so so money still flows to the writer but you have the investment. They, the the author may not be wearing their writer hat all the time they may be wearing their publisher hat for a portion of it and a small press is manage your expectations uh, understand what they've done talk amongst the other uh, talk amongst the community and find out what other small publishers are doing to promote their authors books maybe some of the folks at a particular small publisher that you're considering working with would be and I was very grateful for that there were people who had already previously been published that mm -hmm. by that outfit that so were willing to talk to with me about you know off the record about what their experience had been uh, and, and so really get an understanding of what is expected what 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 you can reasonably expect this publisher to do because the answer should not be nothing mm -hmm. but you shouldn't expect them to bring you to New York uh, for a all expenses paid book signing either. Uh, you're going to be a writer, and you're going to be published, and you can speak to the dicks. You're going to be expected to do yep. a lot of you your, your own, own marketing. Platform and marketing. All right, and, 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 and I'm grateful for, for you folks in a forum like this one to have a chance to, to, to talk with your audience. Hi. I, I because I know a lot of you might not have otherwise heard of me or heard of and again this my is Mark book. Engels Mark J Engels yes and my book always gray in winter is a paranormal sci-fi thriller about the modern-day remnant of an ancient clan of werecats torn apart as militaries on three continents vie to exploit their deadly talents it's the first of a werecat family saga series and, and where can we find your book your website or the the my website is mark engelscom and I'll make sure you guys should have the link already yes, so, so, yeah. so so you can go there and you can read an excerpt from the book there there's also buy links there you can get it on Amazon in both trade paperback and ebook format You'll also find links on my website to where you can publish it for, or uh, purchase it from my publishers. Store Envy site, uh, the Thurston Howell Publications has their own Store Envy site. You can find where that book's listed there. My publisher, Thurston Howell Publications, actually has a, they're, they're continuing their holiday sale right. into the new year. I just found out about this a few days ago. And, and, and so their entire catalog is 5% off, okay. uh, including my book. You can also get a, an electronic copy from uh, another outfit called Bad Dog Books, which those links are all available on my website. Which is? Mark-Engels.com. E-N-G-E-L-S. Okay, and you also have links also to uh, review your books, which is, we always say is important for the local authors. Read local authors, give them that review, them review. which you have, you have uh, quite a few reviews, a lot of positive ones. Yes, thank you. Uh, the, the, there are links also on my website to, not only to the Amazon page where you can leave a review, but also Goodreads is another fantastic yes. place to leave a review because there are, there are a, there are, I think that, that the Venn diagram between Amazon readers and Goodreads reader is not a complete circle. They're, 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 cool. they're, 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 they're cool. there's a lot of overlap, but I think that if you want to do an author right, put a review on both Amazon and Goodreads because there are some people who use one but not the other Absolutely. to search for another book to read. But I think we're going to see a lot more reviews on Goodreads oh. just because Amazon has, they have been making the process of leaving reviews continually more difficult yes, they are. Yes, they are. Uh, in the last several years because first it was anyone could leave a review and then it was well you can only leave a review if you spent fifty dollars in the yeah. last year now it's you can only leave a review on amazon.com if you spent 
50 yes. US dollars <laughs> and now if you have readers in say the UK they can't leave a review on mm -hmm. uh, amazon.co.uk unless and until they've spent 50 pounds in the UK which yeah. Once so. again, a wealth of knowledge. This is Mark <laughs> Engels. My name is Dixie Jarko. And I'm Tom Cannon. And Thanks this is watching. Author Showcase. Thank and you. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Dixie, for having me. No problem. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to be on Author Showcase, please contact us on our Facebook page or at Oshkosh Author Showcase at gmail.com. Otherwise, continue the conversation with Dixie and Tom via social media. Look for Dixie by searching for Daisy Jericho. And please check out her books, The Love Thief and Sparks Fly on Amazon. You can find Tom Cannon on many types of social media. And please check out his book on Amazon, The Tower of Apathy. Our goal is to introduce local authors around Oshkosh and hear their stories. We want to thank the Oshkosh Public Library and the Friends of Oshkosh Public Library for supporting the creation of this show. If you are a writer and are looking for a community, we suggest the Oshkosh Area Writers Club and the Lakefly Writers Conference held each May.